We'll now look at getting our WebStorm IDE downloaded and installed. You'll see we're on the jetbrains.com slash webstorm slash download page. Again, that's jetbrains.com, webstorm, and download. And on this page, we'll see that we're looking at a free 30-day trial. You'll see the current version and build, the release date, and a file size of 149 megs, which we'll be downloading. The blue Get WebStorm 10 Now button. Click on that to start the download and save it off. We'll get this completed. When the download is complete, we'll see that it is an executable. So we'll go ahead and fire it and let the installation process begin. Initially, we see the WebStorm installation wizard screen. Click Next and agree to the license agreement. And we'll see our default installation path. We'll see that it's a 452.7 megabyte installation. Be sure you have enough space available. Click Next. And if you've already got it installed, it won't overwrite. So we'll make a version two and you can create a desktop shortcut if you want. You also can create file associations if you really want to commit to WebStorm. Click Next. Again, Start Menu Options. And the installation starts. At the last page of the wizard, we'll see we've got a complete setup. We can click Run WebStorm and choose Finish. It will fire up WebStorm for us, and we've got a complete WebStorm installation. We're ready to go. When WebStorm comes up, we see an initial startup wizard that gives us the option to create a new project. We click on that option and get a wizard page two. At the top right, we see a project location field, which we could use. And on the left hand side, we see all of the templated project boilerplate options for a range of web and JavaScript frameworks that work within WebStorm, including React, Bootstrap, and Angular. We'll obviously choose the Dart option and see Wizard Page 3, which shows us a location field, a field for the Dart installation SDK path, a resolved version verification showing the SDK we've instructed the project to reference, and a path to the version of Dartium that we want the project to automatically fire up when testing code. Dartium will start in the checked mode here, so we can be more thorough in our code analysis. We'll then choose from a range of project boilerplates. We'll use the uber simple web application for this demo. Then we click the Create button. The project is built per the template and our IDE is open to show us all of the details. On the bottom of the page, we see the logging information that was produced in the project setup. We see the directory in which our project sits, and we see that the template ran the pub get command to download the dependencies our project needs. We see these dependencies were compiled and the process ended without errors. We can look at the pubspec YAML file to see how pub will work with our project. We see that the file is located in the root of our project next to a directory called web. With the file itself, we'll see listed is the project name, project version, and project description options for author and home page as well. Also, the SDK version that we're targeting is listed and any of the dependencies for the project are listed as well. Here we have browser, which is part of the Dart HTML package 
and Dart to JavaScript to compile our project to runnable JavaScript. We can then look at the web directory at the project's root. Within it is a directory for packages and three files, index.html, main.dart, and styles.css, which are the trifecta of a Dart app. Within the index.html file, we'll see that inside its header section are a few specific meta entries, one being scaffolded by, which tells us that stagehand scaffolded the project, and there's also a title entry with Dart Uber Simple as an argument. And there's a reference to our CSS style sheet and our two script references. The first being our application script reference and the second is Dart.js, which will allow us to run our app in the browser. On this simple page, the body section simply has a div with an ID of output, and we'll see how that's relevant in the next file that we look at. We now look at the main.dart file, which is a very simple file for our demo. It shows us that Dart HTML is imported and a single function called main is listed. Within main, we have a query selector with a reference of output, which ties to the name div in our HTML file. And the dot text property of the reference div is set to your Dart app is running. We can also look at the packages directory, which shows us the project's dependencies, including the HTML package, which we imported into our Dart file. The IDE also shows us the external libraries that are included in the project, including the Dart SDK. And we're looking here at the library directory of the Dart SDK, which includes JavaScript and HTML. We can now execute our project to see what it actually does. By clicking the green forward arrow at the top right of the screen, we can actually execute the project. The IDE runs our project in Dartium, and we'll see what we expected. Your Dart app is running, listed in text. And if we go back and quickly check the main.dart file, we'll see we wanted to set the text to your Dart app is running, which is what happened. Very simple, very familiar.